Hey everyone, it's Brittany again, back with another video log. Um, this time our topic is going to be the perks of being a cast member and also being a college program participant because for those of you that didn't know, college program participants get to do a lot of things that normal cast members don't get to do. So I'm going to talk about that. But first, we are going to talk about um, some of the questions that you guys have been asking on our Facebook pages and that I've gotten personally. Um, first, uh, this question is about um, the difference between wellness and non-wellness in housing. Um, I know a lot of you do know what it is, but for those of you that don't, wellness is um, an apartment with people that are 21 years of age or younger and then non-wellness is 21 um, years old or higher um, that's basically it basically non-wellness can have alcohol and wellness can't um, if you are over 21 and don't want to be in an apartment with alcohol you can call them and ask um, to be in a wellness apartment if you just don't want to deal with um, um, the alcohol situation. Um, another thing, this one I just forgot to bring up in the last video. Um, there was a question about transportation and I talked about how you're more than welcome to ride your bike to Disneyland. Um, this time I'm going to talk about the bus system. Um, any cast member can sign up for commuter assistance um, in with Disney. Um, as college program, we are automatically signed up for it. Now what commuter assistance is, is if you are either walking or riding your bike to work, Disney is going to give you two dollars for walking or riding your bike. If you're carpooling or riding the bus, you um, get one dollar. Now what you do is, when when you check in, you get this card, it's your commuter assistance card, and depending on how you got to work, you um, punch in the code for whatever, there's like a little box when you, when you get on property, there's a little box, and you type in what number like corresponds to how you got to work, so if I rode the bus, I'm going to put in number three, I don't remember exactly what number it was, and then you're going to slide your card, and that this card keeps track of how you got to work and how much money you're gaining by that. Um, so that's pretty awesome. But the catch is, it doesn't automatically go on your paycheck. You have to actually go onto the commuter assistance website and basically claim it. Um, yeah, and, and after you claim it, it'll be on your next paycheck after that. So I think that's pretty cool. I claimed it a couple of times. I think the first time I had like 60 bucks put onto my paycheck and the next time I think I had like, geez, like a hundred dollars put onto my paycheck because I would, I would walk a lot because Carnegie isn't that far from the park and sometimes the bus system isn't very reliable. Um, they also give you a bus pass for, um, the, the um, Orange County bus system and you can take any bus anywhere you want as long as it's in the OCT, OCTA, Orange County Transit Authority, there we go. Um, obviously you're going to take it to Disneyland a lot, um, that's what the pass is for and um, the, the thing about the buses is you can like text this number and like what stop you're at and it'll text you back saying uh, when the bus is supposed to be there but it doesn't always come <laughs> when it says it's going to. Um, during my program, they actually added another route um, that goes down Harbor Boulevard to Disneyland, um, and it's a lot faster, doesn't stop as many times, so that definitely helped when, um, when they added that. So that's the Bravo bus, it's 543, and then um, the bus that probably most of us will be taking is just number 43. It goes straight down Harbor, to Disneyland from Harbor and Lincoln is about where uh, Carnegie is. So um, that's basically everything about buses, the buses. Um, there were questions about um, 
what to wear for moving, how costuming works. Um, when it comes to moving, what they tell you is to be in Disney look. You can be in jeans and a t-shirt, um, but do be in Disney look. Um, okay, there, there was kind of like miscommunication, at least with me. Like, they said to dress like casually and like look decent, but they didn't say Disney look. So, like, yeah, I took my lip ring out. Um, yeah, um, like I had, this is my natural hair. I had my hair like this. And when you go in for check-in, you're on the port, the um, courtyard of Carnegie, there's someone there to greet you and talk to you about the Disney look. Um, I don't, if, I'm not trying to like scare anybody or like bash on the program, but the woman that was talking about the, the, the Disney look with us basically insulted me about like she did not like my hair um she asked if i had dreadlocks and that i needed to fix my hair um so be in disney look um like my hair is disney look but she completely insulted me and like this is my natural hair and disney's all about being natural so I won't go into it anymore, but just be prepared for that. She'll talk to you about your tattoos if she can see them. Um, it's okay, but you are taking your um, blue ID picture at check-in, so do make sure that um, piercing, facial piercings are taken out and there's no visible tattoos or anything in this area. <laughs> um, and then for class, you are going to be in business casual. Um, it's it's business casual is pretty self-explanatory. No jeans. Like guys wear collared shirts. Um, girls just make sure that like your straps are thick enough. Um, no visible tattoos, piercings. Um, yeah, it's just take a look at the Disney look. It's on the college program website. Um, it'll explain everything to you. There's there's certain fabrics you can't wear, which aren't that big of a deal, but, um, yeah. And then costuming. The way costuming works is your first day of on your on-the-job training. They will take you into costuming, obviously. There's two... It depends on your role. <laughs> but, um, like, I know some roles have lockers that they go to and their costumes are there. Um, for other roles, like for me, there's costuming, which is at Harbor Points. You'll learn what that is later. Um, and there's two levels. And so, like, my front of house costume would be on the bottom level, and my back of house costume would be on the top level. And they'll show you where those are, and there's kiosks. Like, if you forget where your costume is, you can type in where you work. Um, but what they say is costumes don't fit like normal clothing so um like you might be a size like 14 in disney costuming but you're only like a size six in normal clothing um and then each costume is handmade so like i would get a size 10 shirt and it would be like like it would fit really nicely and then I'd go back the next day and get another size 10 and it would be like really big on me. So what I would do is find costumes that fit you and keep them. You can keep them and wash them at home. Um, there are some that say dry clean only but let's be honest, people have washed them at home. You're allowed three, art you're allowed three different um, pieces of clothing for each article of clothing. That doesn't make any sense, but like you're allowed three shirts, three pants, um, three skirts. Um, but see like for me, cause I was, I had my back of house costume and my front of house costume. I had a shirt for front of house, I had a shirt for back of house. And um, I'm only allowed three shirts total, not three front of house and three back of house, three total and I thought it was three of each at one point and costuming won't let you check out um, 
uh, like another one, you'll have to go talk to them and be like, hey, I need this. And I'll just be like, okay, but like turn in a shirt. So um, it's okay if you check out more than you than you have than you are allowed to, but they will get on you eventually about it. Um, and then if you leave the program or leave working with Disney, then obviously return your costumes <laughs> or they'll charge you. Um, I think that's all about what to wear. Um, another. Um, question was about classes like I know I talked about classes last time but this one is more about how many classes and what the difference is I guess I kind of anyways if you're in fall advantage you're gonna have to take two classes because you will be in the spring or the summer um, term and the fall term so you will have to take two for those of us that are just in fall, we only have to take one. Um, yeah. And then um, the difference between the collegiate courses and the seminar courses is I think if you're getting credit for the program, I think you have to take the collegiate courses. But I'm not entirely sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, yeah. Um, I, if you do want to ask more about that, I'm sure I can find someone that does have the answer and I can, I can definitely help you out with that. Um, there were people asking about different events, like what the different events are for college program. There's tons of them and each program is completely different. Like, I'm not gonna lie, my pro, my first program last spring, we didn't have very many good events. <laughs> and then I'm hearing about like this last fall program and they had these amazing events and the spring program that's happening right now, I'm just like, why didn't we get these? Um, so events that I personally took place in, um, Space Mountain with the lights on is probably one of the best ones and I'm pretty sure every um, program has done it um, since I did mine. Um, we had a backstage tour of Soren Over California, um, we had a tour of Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, which I want to say something about that. It's the way that they do the tour is not very interesting. It's basically the program people have a piece of paper and they just walk you around and they read from it and it's kind of boring. You're a cast member so you can go on the property and look at everything yourself. Um, yeah, I mean if you haven't been on like a back lot before it's really cool to see but like I've been on tons of studio tours before and it was just boring for me but I do encourage you if you've never been on it like in a studio before you should you should go but I will warn you it's kind of boring <laughs> um what other events did we have we had floor wars which are super fun um it's basically there's floors two three four five and then locals um, and you meet up at a park down the street from Carnegie and you do like water balloon toss and um, like an egg carrying on a spoon relay thing three-legged race um, and then they serve you lunch which is super cool my floor actually won during my program and it was all thanks to me and my friend Bree yay and like they give you prizes and stuff um, the first and second place team got VIP seats for Fantasmic so that's super cool um, like I said like I don't I didn't have very many good events it kinda sucked like, there was a Hollywood tour which I personally didn't go on because I've been to Hollywood a million times um, yeah um, I know there was, uh, there's a Haunted Mansion tour that happened during a program. Um, this current program had a Tower of Terror backstage tour. Um, oh, there's tours of Walt Disney's apartment and the Dream Suite. And a lot of cast members, most cast members that work for Disney don't get to see those things. So definitely go on those two. Those are kind of my favorites. Um... Yeah, that's 
all I can think of for events. Oh, grocery bingo, obviously. You just play different kinds of bingo for bags of groceries and Disney swag. It's, it's every month, so it, it was one of my favorites. Um, and then the last question I saw was about beds in, in Carnegie. Um, there is one bunk bed in every apartment in Carnegie except the studios. Um, and there's only two studios in Carnegie, so, um, yeah, the beds are twin beds, not extra long like dorm, dorm beds are, but they're just, they're just twin beds. Um, you can take the bunk beds down, like my roommates did it, but there's literally no room to walk. Um, you can walk, there's like this much space in between the beds, and that's it. Um, it kind of sucked, to be honest with you. Um, I would rather suck it up and sleep on the top bunk than have to go through that again. Now, let's talk about um, the perks of being a cast member. Um, there's a lot of extra things you can you can do as as a cast member. Um, I have I have a short list here, but when when you get to be a cast member, you'll hear of all of these different things that you can do. Um, one thing is early like not admission, but like early viewings of things. So like. Thunder Mountain opens this coming Monday, or next Monday, yeah, this coming Monday on the 17th, and cast members actually got to write it actually a couple of weeks ago before anyone else. Obviously, like, maintenance and, and the people and Imagineers and stuff write it first, but like, then cast members can go, you show your ID, and you write it, and then you can also, there's, for, for big events like that, they give cast members tickets to come back with um, I think two or three other people and you can bring them on with you before it opens um, and then obviously it'll open to the public after that. So just things like that. Um, there, when Before Fantasy Fair opened, it was still under construction. Um, most of it was finished though. Our leads actually, um, if we had a break or something, would let us go over take a tour of Fantasy Fair um, before it opens, so that was super cool um, to be able to do as a cast member. Just things like that, you just get to see things before anyone else does. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you get free entry to the park on any day you want. Mo mo like A lot of the time, our cast member IDs aren't blocked but they are blocked for the 24 hour days, which means you cannot go in the park unless you pay. Um, there are, there's also our main gate passes that you can get people in for free. Um, you can, okay, the way that works is there are blockout dates um, that you do have to watch out for. There's a couple of them a month. Obviously during the holidays, there's a lot of them, but um, you can get three people in 16 different days during the year, um, which that's 40, 40 something, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, there are blockout dates that we have to watch out for. Um, what else? There's just, there's discounts everywhere in the city of Anaheim for cast members. Hotels, like Krispy Kreme, like, like all of Anaheim Garden Walk. It's crazy how many discounts there are for us. When you um, when you do get to go into a team center, they have this book. It's like a little magazine. It comes out like two, two or three times a year. And it's just a book of all of our discounts. And it's awesome. Um, the team center, obviously. Um, the team center is a place you can go, um, like if you don't get your main gate pass in the mail, um, you can tell them and they'll give it to you, that's what I had to do. Um, that's where you can go and get discounted tickets for SeaWorld, Universal Studios, the movies, um, Legoland, which, like there's just so many places you can get discounts for at the team center, and then they have like discounted merchandise, um, they have the college program alumni shirts, I got this, 
at the team center. <laughs> Obviously, they don't sell this in the park. Um, yeah, they just have so many things for cast members there. And they have like a sale every month on certain things. So that's super cool. They have the um, cast member pins there as well. So go check those out if you're a pin trader. Um, you can get discounts. Well, you have your main gate pass. It also works for Walt Disney World as well. Um, you don't get as many sign-ins for your main gate pass in, in Disney World, um, but you get in for free because you're a cast member. Um, and then you, we get insane discounts on Cruise Line um, because they want to fill up all the rooms. They'll release the extra rooms for cast members at a super cheap price um, when it gets towards um, when one's gonna set sail but um, that's what I've heard about Cruise Line and I'm, I might take advantage of it. <laughs> um, now we're gonna talk about um, college program perks. Um, it's obviously you get all the cast member perks. Oh another cast member perk. There's um, like sports leagues for cast members there's basketball there's i think there's volleyball there might be baseball i don't remember all of them but the one that's really exciting is the canoe races you get in the canoes that go around the rivers of america and you race them with all the different teams from all the different lands of disneyland um you get up at like four in the morning and practice like once a week and then um there's a tournament like at the end of the season so that's super cool like there's a softball league like there's there's a bunch of stuff um but cast or er, college program discounts or er, discount i can't speak right now um, perks of being a cast member, um, it's basically all the events, um, there's so many, like I said, grocery bingo, ride tours, ride throughs, um, you get to, like, be in contact with executives, if you take leadership speaker series, you can go and talk to them after your class, um, Dream Suite and Walt's apartment tour, like, there's so much that cast members get that or that college program gets um, that cast members don't. Um, yeah, there's so many more cast member perks than I've told you, but like those are kind of like the ones that you'll probably use. And then obviously, Company D. Everyone's been talking about it. If you don't know what Company D is, it's a store uh, in Anaheim. Is it in Anaheim? Yeah, it's in Anaheim. Um, if you want to go look at it, it's at Cerritos, it's on Cerritos and um, State College um, Boulevard, I wrote, I don't know, State College, um, it's on Cerritos. Um, it doesn't look like much, but it's huge, <laughs> like, it's merchandise from the parks that's been marked down at least 50%. Um, there is a team center in there as well, so you can get team center stuff there too. They sell food. Um, they have a, this cage, which is only, it's not open as much as the normal store is, but, um, they have, like, damaged things from the parks for, like, 90% off. <laughs> um, and, like, they might be like just a loose hem that you can sew up by yourself or something. They sell um, concept art. If you look at that poster right there, that World of Color poster is concept art from World of Color before it opens. And I got that at Company D for like, mm, I think like four bucks. <laughs> um, I have another World of Color, like, you know those stands they have up and then they have like the plastic signs on them? There's one, it's just a World of Color one. It's like plastic. I have another one of those signs from the opening of Cars Land. Um, I have um, a Blue Bayou menu sleeve because I wanted something from the land I worked in. Um, so I got, I got that and I love Blue Bayou. Um, what else do I have? I have a media sign from the opening of Mickey and the Magical Map. Um, <laughs> 
when Luigi's tires first opened, they had giant beach balls and that, that would, you could play with. Those got really dangerous, so they sold them at Company D. And I have one of those. Um, it's ridiculous the amount of things I have, the amount of money you can spend at Company D. Just don't go there before you pay rent. Anyways, if you have any questions, be sure to comment and message me. Um, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Have a magical day.